and cook food for her uh, himself. He would uh, clean out her apartment, do her you know daily chores, and at the same time look after her health and take care of her. At the end of this experience, she came out as a believer. She accepted Islam just because of the good nature and the good character of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that is the kind of man he was. He is a kind of person who people, when they would meet him, and there are many, many people who met him and have reported the same thing. Um, there was a famous statement which many of them would say about Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, especially the believers, especially the companions. Um, they would say that I have never, ever met somebody like him before. And I'm sure I'm not going to meet someone like him in the future too. Uh, he is unique. He is somebody very different. He is somebody very forgiving. He is somebody who touches your heart. He is someone you would like to stay with. He is someone you you'll fall into love with. He is somebody who is so tolerant with you, so patient with you, so so kind and merciful towards you that you will fall into love with this person. He is somebody who uh, attracts you. Uh, if you stay around him. He's somebody you, you're comfortable with when you're around him. He's someone you you want to imitate. He's somebody you, you want to be your role model. He's someone whom you would love to, to spend your time with. Um, so this is the kind of person Muhammad, peace be upon him, was, and he won the hearts of his staunchest enemies, One of some of the people who wanted to kill him and get rid of him. He won their hearts by his patience, by his a perseverance, by his honesty, by his mercy towards them, his forgiving nature, he would never ever take revenge on a personal ground. Not even once did Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there's no reports which suggest that he was would fight back or he would take revenge whenever somebody did something personally to him. The only time he would, you know, take up arms or the only time he would get aggressive is when the religion came under attack so you know that is where he drew the line but whenever you know something personal happened to him people accused him people yelled at him people um, labeled him with negative names people tried to kill him people tried to injure him physically you know come after him he would never ever um, persecute them back or he would never uh, exact revenge on them he would always forgive. Whenever it was a personal thing, he would always forgive. And this is something which we should learn uh, as believers, as people who follow the right path, is that we should be forgiving, uh, especially when it comes to our personal uh, egos and the personal hurts which we feel from people around us. But when it comes to the religion, when it comes to defending the truth, then we should be firm, then we should uh, you know, show uh, that we are there to defend it, that we're not going to take it lightly, we're not going to sit back, we're going to make an effort to defend the truth. And because this is the purpose of life, this is why we're here, to defend the truth, to um, hail the truth, to um, practice the truth, to make it uh, uh, a dominant force in society, to make God's word to be the superior force which leads society. This is the purpose of life. So uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he went through a lot of um, personal um, personal um, oppression, a lot of uh, um, you know remarks. Um, the Quraysh they would call him a magician um, because people when they whenever they would listen to the Quran they would come back mesmerized, they were as if a spell had been cast on them and they would be a changed pe uh, person when they would come back. So they called him magician. Uh, some of them called him uh, a um, you know a fortune teller because you know there are incidents where you know the Quran comes down and and tells us what's going to happen in the in the coming days and those things would would actually take place um, in the life of Muhammad peace be upon him. So some of them would call him a fortune teller. Um, some people called him a poet because of the beautiful poetry uh, in the verses of the Quran. And so there were all kinds of accusations against Muhammad, peace be upon him. His followers, on the other hand, they suffered uh, much more, especially the slaves, especially the women, uh, much more physical torture. Uh, for example, there is this famous slave called Bilal. Bilal, 
uh, who was one of the slaves of one of the uh, you know leaders in Mecca and when he heard the message of Islam and the equality in it for all human beings he knew that that was the truth uh, and he was a black slave um, who had been you know sold in the markets of Mecca and bought and was abused by his masters uh, oppressed made to work really hard without uh, much return um, so he accepted Islam and when his master came to know about that he uh, oppressed him he uh, would lash him um, all day long and uh, they would take him there are reports which which suggest that they would take him out in the desert heat and they would put huge boulders on his chest uh, which would melt the skin under his body um, they would uh, you know whip him with lashes um, they would starve him not give him food they would uh, put on him armor made of solid metal and you know leave him in the in the heat of mecca they would actually make him stand on on burning fire or coal and so a lot of oppression he had to endure and others like him um, and in response he would always say ahad ahad which means one god one god um, his master would tell him that if he were to come back to the paganism that he would be relieved that he would you know be relaxed then you know there would be no oppression against him nobody would do the things um, uh, they were doing to him uh, the oppression would stop but in response every time he was oppressed he would say ahad ahad one god one god and so there are great examples for us today who are really you know do not have to endure any hardships at all uh, for the truth uh, in the first generation of Islam we have many great examples of how to be patient uh, how to sacrifice how to endure the pain how to endure hardship for the sake of God uh, because what could be more beautiful than enduring hardships enduring uh, difficulties in your life for the sake of the one who created you for the sake of truth um, there was also another woman she uh, her master Omar would lash her uh, all day long and then he would get tired of lashing her and would stop and so he would tell her do not think that I have stopped because I have mercy in my heart for you the reason I stopped is because I got tired of, of lashing you and she would say in return no uh, you stopped because my Lord my God Allah he made you stop this is the mercy of my Lord on me that he made you stop so there were women with great resolution great character great uh, promise great faith who were willing to endure hardships in the early days uh, there was another family uh, of a youngster named Amar bin Yasser Amar was one of the early Muslims and he did not have uh, tribal backing so he belonged to a poor family and him and his parents were taken out in the desert and were oppressed uh, to the limit um, so much so that you know his mother actually became the first martyr of Islam his mother Sumayya was uh, you know oppressed to such a degree by Abu Jahl Abu Jahl one of the leaders one of the enemies of Islam the early Muslims he took her out into the desert and he tied her up and then he lashed her and asked her to revert to the religion of uh, many gods uh, and when she refused he actually took a spear and uh, he killed her with that and this was the first martyr in Islam so for those people who think uh, you know women have no role in Islam or they have no contribution in Islam they're wrong the first woman or the first person to become a martyr in Islam was a woman uh, earlier we said the first person to become a Muslim was a woman the wife of Muhammad Khadija and now the first martyr is Sumayya the the mother of Amar uh, who is one of the early Muslims so the women were equally uh, you know taking part in this in this uh, endurance of the oppression they were targeted uh, equally if not more by the oppressive uh, Quraysh leadership of the time so there was a lot of oppression going on and different companions uh, some of them were locked up in their houses by their parents um, you know because we said that Islam always attracts the youngsters the youth and so the youngsters of Mecca when they heard about this message it moved them they wanted to follow it 
but their old parents who had been become used to you know this evil culture this society 